Boot up your work project and find that you're suddenly able to get some solid progress done that night. I'm only moderately lead press now. I've gone up. Yep, see, now they're brighter than the bottom one. You find it harder to focus on anything. Yep. With a good counselor, you're doing the techniques. So I've gone back up. I'm moving up in the world, boys and girls. Fucking Tumblr people who are upset when you call them he or she. So yet another sleep is Thursday night. You're at Alex's apartment. Wide right awake in bed as she's sleeping peaceably beside you. She fell asleep hours ago, <clears throat> and you've been laying here unable to shut your brain up long enough to fall asleep. You've added the feelings of insecurity about your relationship to the rest of the noise in your head keeping you up at night. Uh, up tonight. It was kind of tense night between you two. You arrived after a stressful day at work, and as you made dinner together you barely said a word. You were stuck in your own head and hardly had time being present with her as your thoughts turned to all of the ways you feel like you're deficient at being good a person and beating yourself up mentally for each one. She told you she told you she could tell you were in one of your moods and said that she wouldn't push you but missed talking to you as the two of you sat on the couch together. You wanted to tell her how much you love her but couldn't make out the words couldn't make the words come out right and ended up sounding defenseless instead. As you lay there next to her now, you trace your fingers across her arm, just slightly enough not to wake her. You still haven't explained your depression to her, or how you started seeing a therapist, and it's starting to feel more and more like a secret you're keeping instead of something she simply doesn't know about you yet. It's becoming more and more apparent that it's impacting your relationship with her, and you feel guilty about this. However, you're also terrified that if she knew exactly how fucked up you were, that she would leave you. You're already worried that she's only with you because she doesn't realize how terrible of a person you are yet, and you're afraid that this would be the final thing to expose you. She stirs in her sleep, swoons as she opens her eyes, with the confusion that comes with waking up. She asks if you're awake, and then if everything's okay. So I'm still good. Alright, open up with her about the case? Nah. Tell her about your situation, tell her it's nothing that she get back to sleep. I think I would feel, obviously I feel the text is telling you that you feel bad because it feels like a secret to you instead of just something you never told her. It's just admitted. It's like 2am, she just woke up. Obviously she knows that if I say it's nothing, go back to sleep, she knows that I'm lying to her and just trying to pass it off. So I, I'm gonna just tell her. I feel like a jerk for accidentally waking her up. Are you afraid if you put this off any longer, you won't find the strength to tell her everything later? No, actually, everything isn't okay. Can I tell you something? Something important? Alex sits up, rubbing the sleep out of her eyes, and for the rest of the night, you lay side by side. She just sat up, though. How can you lay side by side? <laughs> Holding hands as you tell her everything. You tell her how it's more than just feeling sad sometimes, how you feel trapped in your own mind sometimes, how sometimes you feel nothing at all, and how you can't shake it off. You tell her how you've started going to therapy, you feel embarrassed about it, and how it's working out for you. She... this person misses a lot of spaces. She listens the entire time, occasionally asking questions about how this or that works, or asking you to explain something further. She squeezes your hand and tells you she understands and that she's sad and you didn't tell her sooner. After laying silent for a moment, the weight of what you did hits you. You desperately want her to say something to tell you that how she's feeling about all of this, but you're too afraid of what the answer would be to ask. You start convincing yourself that now that she knows everything, she's going to leave. There's no way someone could deal with how you really are. So how can I help? What do you need me to do? She asks. You think for a second, the answer comes up. You come up with fills you despair. I honestly don't know. I wish I knew how to fix this, but I don't know what you can do, that you can do anything. I think it's something I just have to live with. She looks at you with sad eyes before kissing him on the forehead. Then I'll live with it, with you. I don't know how you could possibly love me. She rolls over and wraps her arms around your neck, settling her head on top of yours. You don't need to, just know that I do. So, okay, so I assume my mood is gonna go up after this now. Because, uh, I just got a good, I just did a good! Uh, it's Friday night, you're laying across your bed, feeling pathetic. As you were leaving for work tonight, a group of coworkers asked if you wanted to join them for drinks. Feeling antisocial and being put on the spot, you said no. Wait, I lost my spot. No! I lost my spot. Feeling antisocial and put on the spot, you declined. Yeah. You got a habit of doing this. You're so you're often so convinced that you are weird and terrible that any invitation to hang out will end in disappointment for those inviting you. You, need, you never feel like you know how to act in group outings, and 
you feel like a total creep since it seems to come so naturally to anyone who isn't you. You find yourself petrified of breaking some unknown social rule that you don't go off that you don't often go out oh. now however you find yourself alone at home your brain has been telling you how pathetic and sad you are for being unable to just be a normal person and go out with nice people you can't figure out why you can't just go out and meet people and enjoy yourself at the same time you're also feeling like no one would possibly want you to hang out if they really knew you because you're dull and weird anyways you try your typical strategy and boot up Netflix to distract yourself from these feelings, but frustration with yourself builds and you realize you have to do something else with your night. Anything else? Take your mind off of how awfully and lonely you feel right now. What do you do? Really, it didn't go up. Hmm. Get over it and go to the bar with your coworkers or hang out anyways. <laughs> when I'm sad, I stop being sad and being awesome instead. It's pretty much number one. See if Attic is online, call Alex, drink, go out somewhere alone, play with your cat. Um, uh, so here's what I'm thinking. I probably, just because I don't drink as myself, because I find all alcohol tastes awful, wouldn't, I wouldn't drink. I just, I just, I wouldn't, because alcohol tastes like shit to me. Uh, so, not number four. I would probably think about going out somewhere alone, but then just think about it and never actually do. Um, uh, I would probably play with the cat, but probably for like 10 minutes and then do one of these other options. I probably wouldn't call Alex, so let's see if, Ale if see if Attic is online. You sit down at the computer and open your chat client. Attic is indeed online, and the two of you catch up briefly before you start passing links to news stories and weird YouTube videos back and forth. Eventually he asks if you, will, if you would like to play a multiplayer game with him and you start the download. Realizing you haven't eaten yet, you tell him you'll be back in time for the download to finish after you've made yourself dinner. Out in the kitchen you've noticed the time in your microwave. Several hours more than you had expected had passed and you've only just realized it. Though it's not going out to any bar with people, you feel like this is taking the edge off the loneliness that you were experiencing earlier. Even though he's an internet friend, sometimes when you're too down to be social, he's the perfect person to talk to. You connect with him on a meaningful level, and you've found it easier to be yourself while talking to him than you do most face-to-face -face social interactions. When you're down, you feel find yourself using this as another reason to feel like a loser, as though you could only make friends if they didn't have to deal with you in person. But for now, you realize you're relieved to be around him. You finish making your sandwich and sit back down at your computer, download is finished, and Alex <laughs> Alex waiting on you to start. Yay! I have improved! It's a cold, it's a cold Sunday afternoon. You just arrived at Alex's apartment and you're happy to finally see her after a week of absence due to your schedules not lining up to do work in school. You hug her in the doorway as she breaks away sooner than normal and sits down on the couch. So you take off your sneakers and lay them in the usual place right next to hers. There's something I was hoping we could talk about, actually. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> you feel anxious at hearing those words and move to take a seat on the couch. Your heart starts to race. Is this one of those we-need-to-talk situations? That's what I thought. Has she finally had enough of your baggage? Did the weak apart make her realize how much better things are without you? She sits down across from you on the couch and you can tell by the look on her face that she isn't looking forward to saying what she's about to. And you feel your grip tighten on the couch. So, she starts. She breaks eye contact and takes a deep breath, which spikes your anxiety. Things with us have kind of felt, felt kind of weird lately. It's like you've been really distant and I'm not sure how to take it. Because I want to make sure you still want to do this. Us, I mean. She notices you gripping the couch. I mean, I know you have difficulties with your situation, I mean. I just... She looks at your face, seemingly searching. I don't know how much has to do with it, or if it has to do with me, or... I just want to know where we stand. She looks at you with uncertainty and can practically see the knot of pain in her chest. You try to rein in your knee-jerk reaction to run, unsure of what to say to that. Your mind races, you know you have to choose your next words carefully, Though the self deprecation reaches in your mind, you try to think through it. You try to sort out 
what you really want to do here. A myriad of feelings is boiling inside you. Which one do you do? Which one do you do you listen to? What do you do? Whoa! Well, I'm doing better. So, uh, commit to your relationship with ease and grow closer for the experience. Yeah, this, that's not who I am, man. And things for her own good, you're clearly not making her happy. You're having difficulty managing the relationship in your personal life. Break things off for you. You still want this. Reassure her that you are committed to working through things. You still want this. Say whatever you can to make her stay, regardless of your concerns. Yes, there has been distance. Attempt to solve it by asking her to move in. That is the wrong choice. That just... And this current state, asking to move in, would just start a snowball downward and she would totally 100% break up with us. Him. Us. I guess it's technically me too because I'm part of the story. So, nay to number six. Uh, I would, at this point, I would, eh. So I'm torn now between trying to, trying to make the guy happier and keep these boxes on the bottom going up or just picking what I would actually pick and face the consequences of that. So it would be four or five. I'm gonna go reassure her. Oh, I have a cut on my arm and I just scratched it. Oh, that hurt so much. Oh, oh. You look at Alex's face, you feel your heart break. You've never meant to hurt her and you are torn up that you've caused her pain. You can't help but feel like you've let her down and you want to answer for it. You desperately want this relationship to continue, to be stronger. It's one of the few good things in your life. You feel like you owe her so much for helping you as much as she has. Owning up to your feeling failings is hard, but you push through the insecurities for her. You're right. You're absolutely right. You say. Oh, I say. A lot of it has to do with my depression. Sometimes it's really difficult for me to be a good partner to you while struggling with my illness. You take her hand and squeezing it. It's not an excuse, I know. I'm trying to figure this out as I go. The two of you talk about it further. You apologize for letting her down. She listens, and you both talk about your feelings. You end up discussing ways that both of you can be better at being there for each other. The conversation ends up being a very positive thing for your relationship. So, are we okay? You ask a while later. She smiles at you. Yeah, yeah we are. Yay! I'm up again! So, I'm doing well. You may still have your bad days, but now you have effective ways to deal with them and don't get nearly as slow as you used to, or for as long. You still visit your therapist, and even she has remarked on how much more alive you seem lately. In December, you've returned to your parents' house to celebrate the holidays with your family. And that's ominous music. Out in the living room window, you can see a gentle flurry of snow drifting down to meet the pristine blanket of white from yesterday's unexpected Christmas Eve snowfall. You quietly laugh to yourself about incredible cliche, incredibly cliche it seems. Still, as you sit down for dinner, you can't help but notice how being surrounded by family and the overly kitschy <laughs> atmosphere your mom, dec your mom's decorations have created, you actually make you feel relaxed and almost comfortable. Your mom is running around frantically checking the oven and the stockings and just generally trying to family time it up. While your dad sits at the head of the table drinking a beer and laughing with your brother, Malcolm. His wife Karen is there too, whom you've always gotten along with, well with, and your parents even agree to let you bring your kitten along. She's been darting in and out of people's legs and hoping, hopping into laps all night. Laps? As you thoughtfully munch away on the turkey, listening to the conversations around you, your thoughts drift back over the last few months. You think about how hard things have gotten, replaying over in your head some of the, your worst as well as some of your best memories. It seems like all of these things just came to a head over the past few months with a sudden flurry of relationship turmoil and professional anxiety, social stress, and above all an omnipresent sense of weight that, that it seems you have just recently become aware of. You're drawn out of your reverie by your dad's familiar booming laugh as some cheesy comment Malcolm made seems to have hit the spot. Sitting at the table, you're certainly immensely glad for the chance to be able to ignore everything for an evening and not have to struggle with trying to explain yourself for once. Fortunately, everyone seems to be content with laughing at each other's jokes and discussing favorite sports teams, and for a while you think you'll be able to get through dinner without any embarrassing personal intrusions. But no sooner did the thought cross your mind 
and the table conversation trickled off, leaving a slightly awkward silence to descend upon the dinner. So, how are you doing these days? Your mom asked pointedly. <laughs> Get off my case, mom! Uh, it's such a simple question, and one that you seem to have had answer to answer countless times recently. You take a moment to collect your thoughts, then look up, you take a deep breath. Well, you've never thought of yourself as a fighter, and even to say it now really it sounds hokey, but looking back at the past few past few months where you are now, it really does feel like you've endured an immense struggle. And you look at where you are now with a sense of something that isn't quite pride. You still hate your job and find it unpleasant, but you're surprised to find that going into work every day is no longer a monumental challenge. You started adopting some clever techniques, like taking short two minute breaks every hour to break up the monotony and now view your job as a, just a, eight short hours of your day. A compartmentalizing technique Dr. Melville told you about that you've found actually works quite well. You know this job isn't what you want to do for the rest of your life and you've started actively looking for other positions, even attending a course on preliminary interviews. You've started making an effort to go out with your friends more, while the social scene still makes you very uncomfortable sometimes. You're more and more able to let yourself just enjoy the company of your friends. In fact, your relationship with many of them has increased over the past little while. Still definitely have days where you flake out or don't feel like hanging out. For the most part, your friends are understanding and appreciate your communication. By far the biggest change you've noticed in your life has been in your relationship with Alex. You were terrified of talking to her about everything at first, but looking back at back you feel like it's only strengthened your relationship. She has always was always supportive of you emotionally, but lately the two of you have been even more in sync, and it's really starting to feel like you're building a life together. It even seems like the two of you have been making a more con concerted effort to sync up your schedules and have been spending more and more time together. Pretty soon you think of moving in together, very pos real possibility. Dr. Melville has commented on how well you seem to be doing, but you can't, can't help but agree. With all that seems to have improved recently, it's sometimes difficult for you to think about the fact that you still have bad days, sometimes even really bad days. They serve as a stark reminder for the fact that this will be something that you, certain, you will likely have to deal with for the rest of your life. Depression is a battle, and though you're certainly ahead of ahead in the fight, you know the battle isn't ever going to be over. Sometimes even Alex can tell when things are going rough, despite your best in efforts um, to the contrary. While you know that your depression can never be cured, you have a very strong support network in your friends and even Malcolm, armed with a newfound confidence in your friends and family, you f accept that, though the road may be rocky, it is at least at, it is at very least not solitary. You meet your mom's gaze across the table and muster up a smile. I'm good, mom, you tell her. She says nothing. You feel her smile from across the room. Really want to thank you for taking the time to play Depressing Quest. I realize it may not be the most enjoyable game you've ever played, or even the easiest. I sincerely appreciate your involvement. Like Depression itself, Depression Quest does not have an end, really. There's no neat resolution to that depression, and it is important to us that Depression Quest's own resolution reflect that. Instead of a tiny ending, we want to just provide a series of outlooks to make moving forward. Outlooks to take moving forward. After that, we'll all. That's all we can really do with depression. Just keep moving forward, and today is our outlook. Support from people. Thank you again. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. I didn't didn't actually make that many jokes. I don't think I've made a single suicide joke in this video. And holy fuck, like that's really funny to me that I went the whole video without making a suicide joke. So uh, you can read all of this. This has been Muse Myself at Home, signing out. Peace out, guys.